The day has come for the video you've all been waiting for, or at least I have been dying to post this, is the Old Money Aesthetic Style Guide. Everything that you need to achieve this look, what this aesthetic is, and a couple outfits towards the end of this video. So recently, the old money aesthetic has become popular on TikTok, but this has not been a style that hasn't been around for a long time. This has been around for a long time, and I'll personally say I don't love the name they gave this style or this aesthetic. I'd say that calling it a classic aesthetic would be more appropriate because this is a style that stands the test of time. So don't let that term drive you away from this aesthetic. This is just about dressing up for fun and embracing a different side of you through the clothes that you wear. What is the old money aesthetic exactly? The old money aesthetic is based around a wealthy classic style. It refers to people that have inherited their money through their family as opposed to working for it and kind of how those people dress. When I think of old money, I think of the royal family. The royal family and Gossip Girl. Those are the two families that come in mind. Some people might also think of polo ads, Ralph Lauren ads, J. Crew from the 90s, early 2000s, just representing a social class that could be old money. This style is very preppy and stands the test of time. It doesn't matter if you were to see a photo of someone dressed in a classic style, you wouldn't be able to pinpoint exactly when that photo was taken because that style has been around for so long. But first things first, I think the main thing that goes into old money is just looking put together. And you can look clean and put together regardless of your outfit. So let's start with appearance and talk a little bit about that. The first thing about appearance of old money, I would say, is to have your hair always done. I think the most classic old money look is the blowout, the classic blowout, or curling in like this, just subtle curls, nothing too over the top. I'll also be mentioning a lot of things in this video that the royal family has to follow, the girls specifically, in order to maintain their appearance within the royal family. One of those things is to do your hair and make sure that there's no frizz. Don't use hairspray, guys. It's very, very, very bad for the environment. Use like a gel if you have frizz. I definitely have some frizz right now and I did not put hair gel on, but yeah, that's one of the things that definitely can affect your appearance and the way that your hair looks, even if you do have it done. The next thing is to have your nails painted a natural color or just a clear gloss. I would go with a nude or a light pink. This is something that the royal family does as well. And I actually have started painting my nails with a Bear It All Nude Color by Extreme Wear, Sally Hansen. And the reason that I have gone with this color is because you can't tell when it's chipping because it's nude and I only need one color. It goes with every outfit and it always looks very fresh and nice. The next thing is makeup, light makeup. Not anything that's super heavy on your face, not a lot of heavy foundation, maybe just some mascara and a little bit of blush would do, and no bright lip colors. You wanna go with the nudes and the light pinks. So the first thing I wanna mention about Chloe is before I talk about the actual pieces that you will want to obtain in your closet, I wanna talk about the appearance of your clothes in general. The first thing is to make sure that your clothes actually fit you properly. When you're wearing a long sleeve, it could be a jacket, it could be a button up blouse, Make sure that your sleeves are not too long, but it's not just your blouses that you'll want to take in consideration of fitting you properly. It's also your trousers as well. So you wanna make sure that they fit in your thighs, they're not too loose, your waist, the length, if you look at any photos of the royal family, you will notice that all of their clothes are tailored to fit them correctly. And you should also think of that as well because the better your clothes fit you to your body type, the nicer they will look. The next thing you want to do for the appearance of your clothes is make sure that they are steamed prior to going out. Again, such a simple thing that you can do to make your clothes look much nicer. And the last thing is to lint roll your clothes if you have any animals, or even if you don't have animals and you just somehow collect lint onto your clothing, 
uh, yeah, lint rolling them is a great thing to do. Now that we've talked about the appearance and the appearance of your clothing, let's talk about the types of fabrics that you will want to get and the colors. Now, in terms of old money, don't think fast fashion. Again, with every aesthetic, it's very easy to go out and find the things and pieces that you want in your closet, but it does take time, so be patient. Some fabrics that you'll want to look out for is wool, linen, linen would have to be my favorite, cashmere, any silk material, and cotton. Now it's no secret that the royal family is not afraid to dress up in lots of color, but I personally find that sticking to a color palette within your closet is much easier for creating outfits. So for me, this color palette consists of tans, creams, whites, light blues, light pinks, and blacks and grays. Oh, I guess you can go navy too. Okay, so we've gotten through the first part, but let's move on to the actual clothing items themselves. Let's talk bottoms. So must-have bottoms would be slacks, white jeans, white tennis skirt, white shorts, and fitted denim with no holes. Some of the tops that you will want in your closet, you want blouses. You want any sort of blouse. You want a button-up, you want a collared shirt, you want to wear nothing that has labels. You want to keep everything in your closet label free, graphic tees, that's gone. No such thing. You'll want a long sleeve striped shirt along with a long sleeve striped sweater, a white sweater, a navy sweater, turtlenecks, high neck blouses. Those are all really good options. Moving on to jackets, I would say that jackets like, uh, I wouldn't call this a military jacket because it's not strictly that. It's jackets that have the buttons down the sides. I see those a lot. They're very formal, very beautiful. Uh, I would go with a trench coat, pea coats, blazers, and stay away from leather jackets and blue jean jackets. For dresses, I would say one really nice white dress. That's all you need. That's literally all you need. And last but not least on the clothing list would be suit sets. These are the two piece sets that match and they have the jacket with the skirt and you can choose to do it the formal way like the royal family does with the longer skirts or you could go with a shorter skirt that looks a little more stylish, a little more today's era with some different details. I personally like the second one better because Longer skirts don't tend to look great on my legs. Now moving on to shoes. For shoes, you wanna go with loafers, a white tennis shoe, and a tan nude pump. You wanna make sure that the heels are anywhere from two to four inches. This is based off of the royal family's rules as well. You don't want a super tall stiletto, something that you can't walk in. I also think a Black knee-high boot is really nice too. Another thing that you'll see the royals wearing pretty often is pointy-toed heels. Pointy-toed shoes do not look good on my feet specifically, so choose a heel that is good for your foot. But this is something that they have every color of, it seems, and it matches with everything. That's why I said a nude pump is probably one of the best options because you don't need to buy a lot to have something to match the items in your closet. Now moving on to the accessories, and this will be the last bit of how to achieve everything within this look. For jewelry, you wanna go with simple gold jewelry or a pearl necklace, pearl earrings, or some vintage gold earrings that are a little chunky. I just say any sort of jewelry you're wearing, keep it simple. And you also don't have to go with gold. I just think gold looks nicer, but depending on your skin tone, silver might look better on you. Another thing you can incorporate into your looks are brooches. These are very old and vintage and you can find them at a Goodwill or your thrift store, your local thrift store. And you might not think to consider this into your looks, but it does look really nice on trench coats and pea coats. Next are headbands and bows. You see Blair Waldorf wear a lot of headbands and bows. You'll definitely want a sun hat as well. I'd say the simplest and most easiest one to have on hand is just a white sun hat. And this is something that I've seen a lot of. Another thing is an ascot. This is so cute. I love, I love these, even though I don't have one, but they go so good with high neck sweaters or button up blouses. 
I just love the way they look and you can throw them over your head. You can use them as a headband. So there's so many different uses for just one thing. Another thing is pantyhose. You see Blair Waldorf wear a lot of pantyhose. And last but not least, to complete your look, you'll definitely want a pair of classic sunglasses. The one sunglasses that I can think of would have to be Ray-Bans because these came out in the 30s and they have been worn by Marilyn Monroe, Andy Warhol, Audrey Hepburn, and they have always gone with these classic looks and they never go out of style. A couple things before we get into these outfits, I totally forgot to mention purses in the accessories list because I don't normally wear purses. So of course, purses would add a lot to each outfit individually. And the last thing I wanna say, I'm not going out and purchasing anything new. I'm using the things that I currently have in my closet. A lot of these outfits are inspired by Gossip Girl. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's get started. For the first outfit, I really tried to channel my inner Blair Waldorf. I don't care if the headband's over the top and the high socks, I absolutely loved this outfit out of all of them this one has to be my favorite i only have a few white button-ups so to make this one different i just tied this black string that i had around the neck to make it look like one of those button-ups that you see that have the bows i thought this was a really great alternative to do it yourself if you only have one type of top i also added this headband that i got from the 99 cent store and it's so cute, it has pearls, and I wear this all the time. For the skirt, I'm just wearing a black pleated skirt. This was purchased from Amazon a while back, but it fits me so great, and it has shorts underneath. This gray blazer was actually given to me by my sister, and I cannot pronounce the name of the designer. I think it's more on the expensive side, though. I will list it below, but the thing is, I don't think it's available anymore, or even exists. For the next look, I put on my black vest and this vest is so beautiful. I got this from Hot Topic, I think for $60 about five years ago from their steampunk collection. And it's so great because it ties in the back so it fits you properly and I just love the way this looks. This is the closest I could get to a suit set which is why I put these two together. I also changed out my white button-up to my button-up from Forever 21. I got this so long ago, maybe seven years ago, but it has beautiful puff sleeves and the collar goes with any sort of v-neck. Oh, and I'm wearing my knee-high boots. For the next look, I decided to imagine myself going on a boat but also going to a dinner on the boat, if that makes sense. My pants are from H&M. I got them last year for $5. I threw on a different white button up. This one is Alexander McQueen Vintage, a wool blazer that I thrifted for $8, and some sunglasses that I got from Urban Outfitters. I also have this little cute hair tie that I got from Target for $8 and I think it's so cute. It looks very beachy to me, very much like I'm going sailing on a boat. Keeping it more on the nautical side, I threw on some high-waisted blue jeans that I thrifted for $3 from a Goodwill, my other vintage Mickey sweater that has some stripes in it. It's also navy, but you can't really tell, it looks black, and my white button-up from before. I would have loved if I had white jeans, but again, we're working with what I have here, so I went with a light blue jean. This look to me screams Princess Diana, which is why I love it so much. The off-duty princess look was so chic and is still in style, and I think her style was so amazing. For the next look, I went with a white pleated skirt, a blue striped button-up, and a tan trench coat. The tan trench coat is from Forever 21. The blue button up is from Banana Republic and the white skirt is from Amazon. And for the shoes, I have on white sneakers. I'm personally not in love with this white pleated skirt. I feel it's more on the sporty side as opposed to the formal side, but you could pair it with a white collared shirt to look a little more sporty, but I hope to find a white skirt that looks a little more formal in the future. 
For the next look, I was going for a going out for a day shopping look. It's a little chilly outside. I threw on some wild fox sunglasses that are in tortoise shell. And as I said, no labels are preferred. I only have two white sweaters in my closet and they both happen to be vintage Mickey sweaters that I got from eBay about 10 years ago. So I threw on this white knitted sweater and I think it still works. Of course, these looks wouldn't be complete without at least one all white outfit. So for this look, I imagined myself playing tennis and throwing on a sweater afterwards. This is my other vintage Mickey sweater. I feel the logos and the elbow patches are not appropriate for this look to make it old money. But again, we're working with what I have here and trying to turn the wardrobe that I currently obtain into something a little more classic. If I did have a white polo though, I definitely would have preferred that going for a more sporty look. Thanks so much for checking out this video. I do hope you enjoyed it and found some inspiration. But if this is an aesthetic that you currently do embody, please leave some tips below for me and everybody here watching this video of essentials that you feel we need or that I missed in this video. All right, so I guess that's it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.